so I would think that the knowledge gap in the boardroom, at least my experiences, because I have kind of an interesting uh, perspective. Uh, I would say that, you know, from the individual contributor side of the house, the folks that actually have to implement these uh, these strategies and solutions, uh, I think that there's, uh, the, I would consider the boardroom still very much a black box uh, to the boots on the ground. And so, you know, one of the things that I was hoping to get out of this session here today was to help kind of peel back the curtain a little bit and show some more of the individual contributors and the folks out there that are in the field, uh, you know, implementing these strategies for larger organizations, uh, what we're doing at that level. I would say that the biggest thing that's that the gap that I'm starting to see is honestly a communications gap. Uh, you know, I think that everything starts with uh, communication. It extrapolates out to some of the, uh, the other specific areas. But right now, I think it's a communication out and down out of the boardroom to some of the other teams to uh, gain alignment there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that communication gap. I think that's that's something that really uh, it appears in so many in so many different uh, different ways. And maybe we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit. But I, I want to keep going around, uh, and we'll, we'll head over to Safe now. What you know? What's the what's the the gap that you're seeing in in, in the boardroom? Yeah. So um, we we think that um, board members are not usually detail oriented. They're not part of the day to day um uh operations of, of the company and so they're not really aware of the risks um that are posed on individuals whether it's employees uh c level and the board themselves um because being in such a high position i think um makes them have this false sense of security that it's not going to happen to me i'm not going to fall into this uh fishing stuff or whatever um, but no, we, we see it across the board, you know, uh, low level employees, high level employees, they're all, um, they all pose risk in, in uh, one way or another. Um, and another thing that, um, I've noticed is that board members tend to be highly reliant on technological solutions, um, such as, um, my, the distinguished panel here, um, that, a certain type of software can protect the the organization that there is a, a protection layer and you know when when that fails there is uh sorry when when that doesn't fail there is still the human element that can fail and i think um it's uh underemphasized how how vulnerable humans can be in such situations do you do you, do you think um you know from your perspective like, a lot of that comes into the communication gap Something that that Aaron was saying that that perhaps the, the board's not the kind of aware of the risks because communication isn't there, or maybe like you know security you know, security professionals using using jargon. Do, do you reckon that's been playing into it, uh, Asif? Um, I don't know if, if jargon is is really the barrier here. I think it's just um, general lack of of awareness to the dangers outside. Um, yeah, so I, th I think it's it's mainly them not being aware that any employee is an attack vector um mm. attacks can come from from any any point definitely yeah. Let's, does someone want to interject really fast uh mckenzie in this off great points aaron is off and you know where i sort of see the largest gap in security when it comes to the boardroom is that the boardroom is inundated with risk uh, the issue that they're having, though, is actually figuring out what's actually relevant to their business. And True. so there's an aspect of sort of risk management that we refer to as risk intelligence, right? And it's to help drive the board members to understand that, yes, there is a set of inherent cybersecurity risks that we must deal with, but not everything is our problem. Um, and we need to be able to prioritize those problems as they come in with a established sort of program to communicate risk to the business based off of cybersecurity threats. Uh, to the environment that they're sort of uh, monitoring, right? Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that as well. It's uh, And there's not a consistent framework that's out there for board to actually look at to measure. How do we compare? You know, where's our, our value coming? You know, are we truly protected? What's our risk of, of an event? You know, what are our mitigating controls? So I think that, you know, we're all as security professionals trying to help them understand risk. You know, what is the exposure? You know, what is their level of exposure? But when we put together the metrics, there's no consistency from one boardroom to the next boardroom to the next boardroom. But I think it's getting better. I mean, you know, the good news is CISOs are now invited to a board meeting before a breach. 
uh, so they can do some level of education, but they don't want to get too metrics oriented. They don't want to get too scary story oriented. You know, they want to frame it in the frame that, you know, business outcomes and a risk framework that a board will understand. And, and then continuous education, that communication gap, I think, as you mentioned before, uh, is critical as well. Yeah, I I want to I want to go over to to Bob now. Like Bob, you know, you're the chief security officer. You spend time in these boardrooms. We're here from you know. You're also one of the ones that that's explaining risk to other C levels and everything. You know, what, what's what's the knowledge gap that you kind of see in the board group when you're when you're in these meetings in these rooms and, and discussing? Well, I'm, I'm not going to uh, agree. I don't think there's a knowledge gap in the boardroom. There, folks on the board are there to run the company. And where I see the problem is in the, the uh, and if it's the, the CSO or the CISO reporting to the board or a CI, CEO, where I see the failures. And I heard it in the previous conversation. Uh, most folks in cybersecurity are into the metrics. Uh, they're into where the uh, the threats are to the, the company. They're, they're really not understanding the language of risk. I talk a lot about the language of risk and the definition. And if you're talking to the board and you're using colored charts, if you're using high, medium, and low, uh, that's where the breakdown is because those things really are very qualitative. And most board members that that I know are a little bit more quantitative. And it's lost in translation. Most security folks who try to talk to the board, uh, when they're done, the board goes, well, we trust this person. And we hope what he's telling us is accurate, but we really don't understand it. But we're going to count on him. And I think that's why we see uh, the average length of a CISO position anymore. They're, they're, uh, it used to be four or five years. Now I think I see him turn over a lot more because of that. It, it's in that that being inarticulate to the poor. And, you know, I've, I've been in that position previously where following the framework of the company where I worked, I had to talk about the, highs you know the high risks were the ones that were the most important how they're defined is the problem uh i've learned and it's the, our clients that we work with what we help teach them is let's translate that into the language that the board understand and the language is usually dollars and cents it's money it's, it's the impact of the bottom line so as as uh, cyber professionals uh, having that ability to connect uh, in their own language, in in a, a very quantitative way, uh, and in a in a meaningful way, I think that's where that gap is. Uh, the CISOs today, they're some of them are really technical, and that's great. Uh, you know, we need to have that connection to the technical because we have our teams, and then it's the business acumen. You know, I've kind of seen one or the other. Uh, somebody who becomes a CISO because he really is a very uh, business process oriented person, but doesn't get the technical, doesn't get the underlying risks. But then that other one who's too technical and, and it's finding that, that nice combination. And good news is uh, CISOs in either bucket, you can learn how to be both. That, that's where I think that gap is. And that's the CISO is there to fill. Yeah, yeah I, 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 well, I really resonate with that. I'll, I'll pass it over. Sorry, who was the... Uh... Who, 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 I, I just wanted to echo what Bob was saying. You know, I think yeah. to your point about communication, if you're a technical CISO trying to gain funding for something and you're just going into the boardroom speaking technical jargon, most time you're not going to mm -hmm. secure the funding you need for that project to be able to get through. Because at the end of the day, dollars and cents are what matter. And if you can't justify why I'm going to give you a million dollars to spend on a security program, well, I'm not going to give you that money, right? I think ultimately that's where we come down to well, they didn't give me the money that I needed to secure something. Well, you didn't do your job at actually pitching why you needed the money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's really interesting. I, I love I love the kind of conversation around this because when you look at the title, it's kind of it insinuates that there's a there's a knowledge gap on the on the leadership that they're failing to understand security. But when you're kind of discussing through it, you can see that the the, the knowledge gap is also a translation gap. You know, uh, if Aaron immediately started talking about the communication uh, as well. So this, I think, this also has a big impl like big implication on it, being able to translate those those concepts. Mm -hmm.